G'day Starlo here. Some anglers seem to be a little bit confused about the subject of gear ratios in fishing reels. So let's have a quick look at what gear ratios actually mean, how they impact your day-to-day -day fishing, and which ones you should choose for the styles of fishing you prefer. Direct drive reels without gears, such as most center pins, side casts, and fly reels, have an effective gear ratio of one to one. In other words, each full rotation of the handles results in one rotation of the spool. By contrast, in all geared reels, thread lines or spinning reels, overheads, bait casters and the like, one complete turn of the handles results in more than one turn of the spool, or in the case of spinning and closed face reels, the mechanism that recovers line and wraps it around the spool. So these reels have a gear ratio, which is expressed in terms such as 4 to 1, 5.2 to 1, 7 to 1 or whatever. The higher that first number is in the listed gear ratio, the faster the reel is. In other words, the more times the spool or the pickup spins for every turn of the handle. Obviously, this has a direct impact on how much line is retrieved every time we spin the handle. Although, as we'll see in a minute, there are also a couple of other factors that impact actual retrieve speeds. Now you might think that high retrieve rates are a really good thing and that all reels should be built to be as fast as they possibly can. After all, if we want to slow down, for example, to get a better action out of a certain style of lure, we can just wind the handle a little bit more slowly. While that's true, high speed gearing also comes with certain mechanical disadvantages. For starters, the higher the gear ratio, the greater the difference in physical size between the main gear and the pinion or drive gear inside the reel. Obviously, there are practical limitations on how dramatic that difference can be. They come down to the sheer size of the main gear that you can actually fit inside the reel's housing. And also the fact that as the pinion gear reduces in size, it can become weaker and more prone to wear and tear. When I was growing up in an era that saw a blossoming of high-speed spinning for pelagic fish like tuna and kingfish from the ocean rocks, the need for speed was paramount. In those days, gear ratios of 6 to 1 or higher and actual retrieve rates in excess of a metre of line per handle turn were the holy grail. Those who could achieve such flat stick retrieves definitely caught more of these fast swimming pelagic fish. But there were trade-offs too. And the old 6 to 1 Seascape Australian made overhead, the first reel to achieve such high speeds, was notorious for failing under extreme load. At times its tiny pinion gear would simply shatter like a cracked walnut during a torrid encounter with a heavyweight fish. Happily, manufacturing methods, construction techniques and metallurgy have all come a long way since the 1960s and 70s. Today's high-speed reels are much more reliable than the old seascapes, and such catastrophic gear failures are rare indeed these days. But you still need to accept that a very highly geared reel might wear and deteriorate a little sooner than a slower one. The other reality we need to accept is that highly geared reels are simply harder to turn under load than those with lower gear ratios. This is because of exactly the same principles that apply to push bike gears or the winch on your boat trailer. Lower gearing means you have to make more turns or rotations to achieve the same results, but those rotations can be performed with a lot less effort, whether you're pedalling your bike up a steep hill or winching a heavy boat back onto the trailer. So lower gearing is effectively more powerful than higher gearing. And that's exactly why some sophisticated game and overhead reels have dual speed gearing. A fast ratio for quickly recovering the line and a slower one for cranking heavy stubborn fish up out of the depths. Hopefully that helps you to better understand gear ratios in reels, but we also need to understand that gear ratios aren't the only input affecting your retrieve speed. There are two other factors that we need to consider. One is the effective circumference of the reel spool, and the other is an obvious one, <laughs> how fast we can spin those handles. Spool diameter and circumference are often overlooked factors in the actual retrieve speeds of a reel. Do you remember your school maths? If so, you might remember the concept of pi, 
No, not that kind of pie, although I studied those a fair bit at school. <laughs> the mathematical one, expressed with this symbol. Pi governs the equation for working out the circumference of a circle. To do so, you simply multiply the diameter of the circle by 3.14 to obtain its circumference. So anyway, a real spool with a diameter of about 40 millimetres actually has a circumference of around 126 millimetres. On the other hand, a spool with a diameter that's just 5 millimetres larger at 45 millimetres has a circumference just over 141 millimetres. Clearly, this impacts actual retrieve speeds. Two reels with exactly the same gear ratio, say 5 to 1, will retrieve different amounts of line per handle turn if they have different sized spools. Obviously this will vary depending on how full the spool is too. If your line load is well down, your reel will effectively be slower. That's worth remembering. Keep your spool well topped up if you want maximum retrieve speeds. These days, some reel makers actually list the length of line retrieved per handle turn with a full spool, and that's a really important stat to have at your fingertips when you're choosing reels. By the way, it's pretty easy to measure this for yourself. Just pull, say, two meters of line off the spool of the reel, measure it accurately, then make one complete turn of the handle, measure the difference between the two lengths of line, and that's how much line you recovered during that turn. Easy peasy. Finally, how fast you can spin those handles has a direct impact on how quickly you can retrieve line. This comes down to the smoothness of the gears, the length of the handle shaft, and how dexterous or skilled you are in actually cranking it. You need to factor all of these things in when you're choosing between different makes and models of reel. As a rough rule, reels with gear ratios between about 4.5 to 1 and 6.5 to 1 suit most common fishing applications. You should really only be looking for ratios significantly faster or slower than that range if you have quite specialised needs. Otherwise, they could be more of a hindrance than an advantage. Anyway, I really hope that this little explainer video has helped you to better understand gear ratios and retrieve speeds in reels, and it might help you when choosing your next reel. If you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and perhaps consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines.